Bismillah. He is the benevolent, the giving and merciful. He so indescribable. His love is irreversible. Word undeniable. Lyrically untriable. Ultimately viable. Eternally suppliable. Maybe inconceivable, but beautifully believable. The true reality. There's no similarity. Gave us more than charity, peace and prosperity. Why did we never care to see it? We could keep its clarity. The Almighty, the Father, metaphorically, but in the history they tried to make his word a mystery. Gave a mortality, anthropomorphic fallacy. Say he's got a seed, they can never bring the proof to me And honestly, the greatest, the best beyond time and space Beyond matter and flesh, yes, he's uncomparable Yet his parables, infinitely listed pictures Couldn't give us the description, the pictures missing But he created all the living in every dimension And he inspired what I'm giving, the giver of wisdom Devoid of any needs, anything that he want All he has to say is be, cause he's the untouchable Infinitely trustable, his plan unstoppable, power unstoppable Untoppable, the reliable, undeniable, greater than the physical, master of the mystical, the master of the worlds, the fashioner of seas, the crafter of the universe, the atoms to the bees. He is love, he is truth, he is light, he is one, he is king almighty. How crap. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. And Ramadan Mubarak, my sister. Ramadan Kareem. Regardless of where we are, the show must go on. Is that right? That's right. Praise be to Allah. Let us open in prayer. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Say, I seek refuge in Allah against the accursed Satan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world. The beneficent, the merciful, master of the day of judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for help, and guide us on the right path, the path you bestowed your favors upon, and not the path you brought your wrath down upon, nor those who've gone astray after hearing thy teachings. Amen. Amen. Praise so, be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. So we got another, another great show uh, for you today. So go right ahead, my dear sister. So welcome to season three, episode, let me get it, 19. 19, we got it today. All right. Of the 99 attributes of Allah in 30 days, where we take three to four attributes per day and go into their meaning and their usage in our environment. And this year's theme is living by the book, attributes in action. And Allah says in the Holy Quran, quote, Allah, there is no God except he. To him are the most beautiful names. And believers, these beautiful names are the 99 attributes of Allah. And the 99 characteristics of Allah, God reflects the noblest of qualities and abilities. They represent the ideal for the human beings to inspire to. And our Islamic tradition says, derive your manners, your character from the attributes of Allah. And therefore, our beloved Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, reported to have said, cultivate within yourselves the attributes of Allah. And our minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farhan, quoted or tweeted to us, when you have an attribute of God, you should strive for degrees of excellence in that attribute. That's right. And again, this year's theme is living by the book, Attributes in Action. And so I looked into um, some of the words of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as he talks about the attributes of Allah. And he says, you say, quote, and this is coming from Message to the Black Man, page 22, chapter 11, Allah, the best knower. He says, you say, quote, who is this Allah and this religion, Islam? End quote. Know my people, the divine supreme being has 99 attributes that make up his name. And Allah is the 100th. And surely his mm -hmm. are the most beautiful name. He will mm -hmm. make himself known to the world that he is God. And besides him, there is no God and that I am his messenger. And that Islam is a religion backed by the power of Allah God to free you from the hands of your merciless enemy, the slave masters, once and forever. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. And so we thank Almighty Allah for giving us Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who gave us a book through that man, the Holy Quran was manifest. But Allah also gave us three men 
Master Fahd Muhammad, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and all of those three men are the Quran alive and walking and in our midst. And we are about to show you a video where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the time and what must be done, he talks about Master Fahd Muhammad, the great Mahdi, and how he is those attributes of Allah. Plus, what, what it plus what, Brother Eileen? A few more. Oh, praise be to Allah. Let's watch the clip. As we have been sharing with you in these broadcasts of the time and what must be done, the representation of the great Mahdi, or long looked for guide of the Muslim world, Master Farad Muhammad, who is the master of the wheel, and the great Jesus, the Christ. The Christ and the Mahdi are one and the same. For Christ means one anointed with power to crush the wicked. And the Mahdi is one also anointed to set justice in the earth and to set down every tyrant. And we are saying that in our humble judgment, he, the Mahdi, the Christ, is so magnificent. There has never been a manifestation of God like him. And when the Quran says in the 112th surah or chapter, and there is none like him, never has there been one like him who is the master of that great mother plane or wheel. He is the manifestation of all of the 99 attributes of Allah plus a few more. As Allah is always coupling his attributes in this manner, he's mighty, but he's wise. He's strong and powerful, but he's the forgiving and the merciful. He is the avenger and the destroyer, but his power is always balanced with his oft returning to mercy and his forgiveness. He's always balanced. We would have to do something so terrible that would allow him to unleash the fullness of the power that he has. Praise be to Allah. And you know, dear sister, he said that nine, manifesting 99 of the attributes of Allah plus a few more, right? right? And, and he came to make us into himself. Yeah. So just imagine as we get ready to watch this next clip, that if we could operate 95 to 99% of our mental capacity, who would we reflect? Roll that clip. And if you could use 95 to 99% of your mental capacity, then you would be a reflection of God himself. Yes. This is why we as Muslims can wear the names or the attributes yes. of God. Because we are born to reflect yes. him. Yes. Yes. The beneficent. Yes. The merciful. Yes. Mm. Rub the Lord, the nourisher, the sustainer, the evolver. We all have that power to bring a thing into existence and nurture it until it reaches perfection. God made us like himself. You got the power of life and the power of death. Power, power, powerful. So praise be to Allah. And this is 
another excellent example, brothers and sisters, on why we desire to have a theme this year, living by the book, the attributes in action. So, Sister Dear, who do we have with us today? Oh, uh, you know, I get excited. I guess I'm excited every time I interview <laughs> But it's a very even if you don't even excited. if you're not introducing somebody, you're excited, right? <laughs> you know, and the reason why is um because when you are a soldier, right, and we soldiers in this army of Allah, and you're in the trenches and you're doing the work, right? You you like me and you, we have a certain camaraderie and so and a certain love. And so I have a tremendous amount of love for this sister because she uses her her powerful gift of the pen to be able to help propagate our faith and tell the truth, yeah. right? Yeah. So this sister, yeah. she's the managing editor of the Final Call newspaper. Um, but she not only does she just write for the Final Call newspaper, but a lot of the newspaper here in, in, in this country, right? Seek her out and she's written for. Her. And she tells the unadulterated truth, the truth that no other newspaper on this planet wants to go seek on behalf of our people. And so I'd like to introduce our dear beautiful sister, Sister Stala Muhammad. As alaikum, sis. Wa alaikum salam. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan. And Ramadan Kareem. I told her, I said, now you know you're on the other side now, right? Uh, right. Now, I'm she's on the, the one that she's the one now, right? <laughs> right. She's always, always, you, my sister. <laughs> she's always interviewing others, right? Yes, yeah, she's always That's interviewing right. others. Right, right. Praise be to Allah. I Allah. am so just happy and humbled to be with you once again for the 99, the 1 and 30. It's, it's truly an honor and I appreciate the invitation. And your program has become an integral part of my Ramadan routine. I still have my mm -hmm. note cards from season one. Hey, Come on I now. <laughs> that's, a, hey, that's a true, true, true supporter. Oh, we got to get a shirt out to her. <laughs> Make sure you Absolutely. get her information. Make sure you get her information and uh, we got to get her something. <laughs> well, praise is due to Allah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. All and right. so I have been uh, blessed by Almighty God Allah to present on this episode three attributes of Almighty God Allah. And the three attributes that I have been uh, presented with today are Al Muzil, Al Muhyamin, and Al Mumit. But first, let me open. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the most holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is but one God whose proper name is Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. And I would like to greet everyone once again in the greeting words of peace of Isalam alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. Wa well, alaikum salam and Ramadan And Ramadan Kareem. And the first attribute that I would like to present is al muzil the dishonorer, the humiliator, the disgracer, other terms, the degrader and the abaser. And Allah is al muzil And another term that I ran across is also al muhil And it means he, meaning Allah, gives esteem or respect or admiration to whomever he pleases. And when he does that, there's not going to be anyone that could degrade or disrespect that person. However, Allah also degrades whoever he pleases. And when he does that, there is no one else to provide that person with esteem. And so once a man is degraded or disregarded by Allah, he may never again be honored without the permission of Allah. So in doing some research on this particular attribute, al muzil I learned that it came from the root of dog and then lamb, lamb, meaning to be low, to be vile, contemptible, despicable, abased, to be lowly. And so Allah, when we don't obey him and for those who disbelieve and even more so those who are the hypocrites, Allah will humiliate them. So the only people who have to worry about this or of course, those who are the disbelievers or who are the hypocrites, those who reject Allah, reject his way through his messengers. So the name Mudhil, which is also a part of that attribute, 
um, what I ran across is it says it's not specifically used as one of the names in the Quran for Allah. And there's no particular ayat which explicitly mentions that particular name. However, there are ayats that describe this particular attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of those ayats is in Surah 3, ayat 26, which reads, Say, O Allah, owner of the kingdom, you give the kingdom to whom you please and take away the kingdom from whom you please and you exalt whom you please and degrade whom you please. In your hand is the good. Surely you are powerful over all things. And another ayat in the Holy Quran says, so Allah made them taste disgrace in this world's life. And certainly the chastisement of the hereafter is greater, did they but know. And so we have examples in both Bible and Holy Quran of what happened to those who rejected Allah's message. We saw what happened during the times of Noah, of Lot, of Moses, of Salih, and others. So when looking at this particular attribute of Allah, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on this side of Allah that causes me to be humiliated or dishonored or disgraced. And so how do we strive to not fall victim to that? Of course, the answer is by seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan delivered a khutbah during a Juma uh, in 2002 at Mas Mariam, and he said the following. He said, why should I or you seek refuge in Allah God? It is because he is the beneficent. He is the merciful. He is the most merciful of those who have mercy. He is the oft forgiving and the only one who has the power to remove us from the consequences of our actions. Surely there is no God but Allah and on him let the believers rely. Why should I place my refuge in Allah God, the minister asked. He continued, it is because he is the master of the day of requital, the day of judgment. He is master of all circumstances and nothing happens except by his permission. If he permits something to happen that may not be comfortable for me, then if I put my trust in him, surely he will take me through the darkness to the dawn of a brand new day. And again, that is from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And once again, brothers and sisters, that attribute was Al Muzil, the dishonorer, the humiliator. The next attribute that we will be going over is Al Muhyamin, the guardian, the witness, the overseer, and the protector. Allah calls himself Al Muhyamin, the guardian, the witness, the overseer, on one occasion in the Holy Quran. He is the one who ensures the well being of creation. Al Muhyamin observes, guards, and he protects his creation. Muyamin comes from the root ha, meme, and noon, which points to three main meanings. The first main meaning means to oversee, to protect, to guard. The second meaning is to witness. And the third main meaning is to determine the truth. Linguistically, the root of Muyamin also means to extend a wing like a hen protecting her chicks. And this is related to other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al ragi meaning the watcher, al hafida the one who protects and guards, al ashahi the witness. al muyamin is the one who observes, controls, looks after, and completely covers and judges us by the truth. In Surah 59, Ayah 23, it states, He is Allah, besides whom there is no God, the King, the Holy, the author of peace, the grantor of security, guardian over all things, the mighty, the supreme, the possessor of greatness. Glory be to Allah from that which they set up with him. 
And I ran across some very interesting information in researching this particular attribute as well. And one of those is the question is raised, how can you live by this particular name, Al Muyamin? Be aware that Al Muyamin is watching you. The Prophet Muhammad Sahalehi Wallah said, Be mindful of Allah, and Allah will protect you. Al Muyamin sees every deed that you do. He observes your reactions to situations and even witnesses your inner thoughts. Remind yourself constantly of this fact and let it motivate you and me to stay away from sins and temptations. Al Muyamin will protect you from harm, even from committing sins, if you are mindful of him and keep remembering him in your actions. Another interesting item I ran across in researching this attribute it says, Believe with certainty that whatever Allah, Al Muyamin, gives, you, gives to you or keeps away from you is good for you, even if it doesn't always seem like it. He is overseeing and everything is part of his plan. Complaining about your looks, complaining about what others may have, others' belongings, or about missed opportunities, etc., are signs that we have to strengthen our faith in al Muqyamin. Accept, accepting and being content with his decree will be our true key to the tranquility in our hearts that we so badly long for but we cannot find in anything else in this whole wide world unless we submit to al Muyamin. And the last attribute that I am blessed to present to you all today is al Mumit, the bringer of death, the destroyer, the slayer. Allah is al Mumit, meaning one who gives life and the one who takes it away. He, Allah, ordains who will become lifeless, and eventually we all return to him. The root comes from meme, wow, and ta, which has the following classical Arabic connotations. To die, to pass away, to burn out, to be lifeless, to be quiet, still, calm, to be inanimate to be deprived of, to be spiritually dead or lacking spiritual life. The names Al-Muhi and Al-Mumit are often mentioned together for their contrasting nature. Al-Muhi is the bestower of life. Al-Mumit is the bringer of death. These two attributes are not shared with anyone other than what is reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, he gives life and causes death and to him you will be returned. In Surah 57, Ayah 2, it states his, meaning Allah is the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. He gives life and causes death and he is possessor of power over all things. And we know brothers and sisters that the death of a loved one is painful for those of us who love that person. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke about this during the 2019 Janazah service of our dear brother, Minister Abdul Rahman Muhammad in Atlanta, who we affectionately call the Rock of the South. May Allah forever be pleased with him. The minister asked this particular question when making remarks at our brother's Janazah. He asked the question, why would God give us life knowing that all of us are going to die? And the minister said to our Christian family, the scripture says the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But then he says, blessed be the name of the Lord, so that when death visits us and it's going to visit us all, sometimes the visit will be to us directly. So Allah, pardon me, so the Quran says, the minister quotes, Allah is he who takes men's souls by night. And if the decree of death has not fallen upon that soul, then God returns that soul back to that body and they go on another day, another week, another month, another year until it's their time. But those on whom the decree of death has passed, he keeps those souls to himself. The minister continues by saying, 
uh, my pardon me, the minister also continued in the janaza for our dear sister, student minister, Dr. Ava Muhammad, may Allah be pleased with her. He said that a sermon that he had listened to that resonated with him from a Christian preacher, he had asked the question the Christian preacher had asked, what are you or what are we doing with God's time? So brothers and sisters, we know that Allah is the author of life and death. So of course, what we do in the blessed time that Allah has blessed us with on this earth is key and is so important. And that is the last attribute of Allah, Al-Mumit, the bringer of death that I am blessed to present to you this evening. And with that, brothers and sisters, I would like to thank you very much again. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ooh. I'm trying, I'm try, I'm trying, brother Ali, yeah, to get to get my it. Arabic. You started it. <laughs> I hear you. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you, Sister Star. Sister, there you go right ahead. So, you know, as you're talking, what jumped out at me. Um, when we talk about the dishonorer, the humiliator, or that guardian and the 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 bringer of the destroyer, it kept bringing me to the thought of the self-accusing spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And how when uh well, let me read what sister our dear beloved sister Ava she um she was quoting from the minister in the commentary, uh, where she says the rising to life of the spiritually dead and the great resurrection are one and the same, and the first stage of in our spiritual resurrection occurs through the stimulation of our self-accusing spirit. And that is when the inner voice speaks, guides, warns, reproves, exhorts, accuses us going contrary to what is right. And this phase of our development is designed by the help of Allah God to bring about a transformation or a complete change in our life. And this is done by stimulating the self-analysis and self-correction in us. And self, our self-improvement actually brings into fruition the awesome power of Allah God to make complete his are our, our whole mate. Now, Holy Quran 75.4, the emphasis on that. And she's quoting the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so as I'm listening to um, you talk about that guardian, right? Yes. And, and, and the witnessing of our inner thoughts. Um, could you talk about the connection um, that you had with these particular three attributes and how it's important as it concerns our self-development and focusing on that self-accusing spirit and not killing it, not nullifying it so that Allah will continue to guard us and elevate us at the same time. Yes, ma'am. You know, when delving into all three of these attributes, I'm going to be honest, particularly with the first attribute of Al-Muzil, meaning the dishonorer and the humiliator, and even the last one, Al-Mumit, meaning the causer of death, both of those actually gave me a bit um, a bit of pause because I was like, wow, an attribute of Allah, this first one, um, you know, the humiliator, I don't want to ever be on that side of Allah in terms of that doesn't mean that, um, of course, as believers who are striving in the way of Allah, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have missteps. It is not going to mean that we're not going to have trials and tribulations in which our faith may even, uh, we may question our own faith. But um, I think Allah, I don't think, I know that Allah in his beneficence, in his mercy, in his attribute, being the guardian, the protector and the overseer of those who are striving to be um, believers and strive in his cause, that he gives us a guardian or protection. So even when we stumble and fall, even when we do things that may be displeasing to him, he comes back being that protector. Okay. Okay, daughter. Okay, son. You slipped up. You did this, but you know I'm allowing you through my beneficence, through my mercy, to to get another chance. And I think whenever Allah blesses us, I know whenever He blesses me to bounce back from you know my my missteps, that I'm always thankful to Him and I'm always in my prayers. Okay, Allah, help me to become stronger in my faith so that I don't make that particular mistake again. And that I can perhaps be an example to someone and be a helper to someone who may be going through a similar struggle. So I believe all three of these attributes, at least for me, those, those, uh, that first one and that third one gave me pause, gave me some heart palpitations. I'm going to be real with you on that one, since this idea 
But then I was <laughs> able to, with that, go back to that that middle one, um, Al Muyamin, the guardian, and uh, you know, my heart my heart rate slowed down a little bit more. Praise be to Allah. Praise, praise be to Allah. And it's beautiful that you say you go back to that particular attribute, Muhammad, because it it one of the other meanings is um, the one who brings peace after fear. Mm. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. so that that's so beautiful. And I'm glad you highlighted, you know, um verse in my my edition it it verse uh three and twenty five, right? Um and based upon what edition you have trying to leave verses exactly. it's a little different sometimes, right? So and that word a baser is there, right? Which which to, you know you're right when you said that um Muzil is not there in terms of an attribute. Right, but in terms in terms of a verb, it is right. Yes. It's tuzin, tuzin, right? And the one who is being abased, or one who is the abased sword. And it just and I want to encourage us to go back and read um, for us to read study guide fifteen. You know, because this whole discussion around is um, humility is it one of the divine attributes of Allah? Right. And the minister goes in the actually in the letter, he begins to talk to us about and pointing to a uh, message to the black man, page 24 and page 25, um, that proved that humility is an attribute of Allah. God, somebody actually quoted that to show that humility was an attribute of um, of it. But the minister said it's a characteristic and, and humility is the characteristic of the righteous. Right. So I just thought that was so you know, profound in this whole discussion. And it takes it right back to the man of God. And we, we do know that he received this revelation, you know, uh, insight. He said something was put in him when he went up, right? When he went up to the, they had that more than a vision experience. So I wanted to go back to that particular source and look at that. So my question for you, I was gonna have you laughing with that. So how do you use Muzil in your life? <laughs> Be like, uh, I don't want to use that one. Okay, that ain't one yeah. I'm gonna use. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you how do you use how do you use the attribute um or Haman to bring us out of and not fall victim to Mukit and Muzil? Mm. Good mm. question. I think it, it goes back to um brother Eileen, you know that particular attribute really just stood out to me because I know just in certain situations and trials that I've dealt with over the years, um, I know for a fact that, you know, Allah has been a protector, has been a guardian uh, over me in certain situations. And so the fact that in this particular attribute, um, it says that he, meaning Allah, is the one who ensures the well-being of creation. And we're all a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation that it only makes sense that he's going to be a guardian over us. Even sometimes when we're not doing the best at being a guardian over ourselves, whether it is, you know, situations that we may place ourselves in, um, whether it is spiritual trials that we may be going through. So I think that particular um, attributes, and I really love the example that I ran across where it talks about the root of the of that attribute, meaning to extend a wing like a hen protecting her chicks. Mm, so yeah. I visualize that, yeah. you know, in terms of wow times that you know it it wasn't it, what does it say? Uh, but for the grace of Allah, go I, you know, that I know yeah. for a certain fact that. You know, Starla, that wasn't you, not in a spooky sense, but that was Allah subhanahu no. wa ta'ala interfering, being your protector, being your overseer in this particular situation. So that particular attribute just really, really uh, resonates with me. No, you know, you're, you're right, because if you notice, all three of your attributes begin with mu. Mm. Mm. Yes, right. Sir. And and that that's that's an active participle being placed on that noun, right? Mm. Or because you know, a noun is a person placed thing or an idea, right? So in this case, these are ideas, but it's one now who is the engager of these ideas, right? So he is the one that brings about death. He is the one that is the abaser. He is the one that brings 
light or he is the one that guards. So you're absolutely correct. There, with these three attributes alone, it's him that does it, right? And so, so that's no. So you, you absolutely a thousand percent correct in that because there's certain things in our life that where, you know, we have to call on the uh, the power of God, right? right. To His Majesty, right? To intervene in our affairs. There's certain things that we can do, but there's certain things that just you know, you, you got you to gotta call on the God. And that exactly. was not our run. Go right ahead, please. Yes, sir. And I think even with that, uh, Brother Eileen, even with the uh, the attribute al-Muzil, when you look at, you know, those meanings, the dishonorer, um, the disgracer, but Allah has always gives us something to look at as a lesson. So when we go mm -hmm. back to looking at, you know, uh, whether it's Bible or Quran, there are lessons to be learned from, uh, what happened to those who rejected Allah and his message, rejected the servants of Allah. So, uh, you know, we've got those lessons. We've got that history, which, of course, we know we've got that prophecy as well in terms of how do we not, again, fall victim to being like what happened to the people during the time of, of Lot. I don't want to be turned into a pillar of salt, you know, Come on now. Uh, or get swept up in the flood uh, when that comes. So. Uh, even with that particular attribute, you know, Allah, again, in his beneficence, in his mercy and in his being a protector of that, of that he says, look, I've given you um, lessons to look at so that you don't fall victim to being uh, someone that I have to dishonor. Correct. Absolutely. Beautiful. You know, and as I'm listening to the discussion, it makes me think of your position um, as a as a writer and how you have to be up to date with current events and so as you're writing and as you're watching as you talk about the prophecy unfold right and what we what we know that's happening with the judgment um not in you know in america and anybody who attacks the honorable minister lewis bark on the, the most honorable elijah muhammad um and us right yes ma'am we see that these attributes are coming into play exactly because he's our mm -hmm. guardian master art is definitely our guardian exactly. uh, he's extending that wing to us but then at the same time, those who come against, you know, the messenger, the master, the messenger and the minister. Right. Those attributes are coming to um, effect. Now, in your personal mm -hmm. life, how have you seen um, that happen for you where Allah came, you know, came to um, came as your guardian. But at the same time, those who came against you. Right. Mm -hmm. He had to level them down. <laughs> wow. That is a good question. I mean. There are so many times where I know that it 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 was no no one but Allah. And again, we also know not believing in the spook God that Allah, you know, he sends you uh, men and women in your life. Mm -hmm. So there have been times where I might have had a question or a thought with regard to uh, maybe something that was going to go in the paper to be written a certain way that I maybe had a question about. And then Allah, you know, I would get a phone call from someone um, who answered that particular question or helped to show me something like, okay, wait, maybe it may, maybe it needs to be framed or phrased in this way as opposed to that way. Because as we know, you know, words and representation are so important and key, particularly depending on you know, what's happening in the world. So we don't want to do, and I don't want to do more harm than good to the minister or the mission by, um, you know, having my little ego in the way, well, no, it needs to be phrased this way as opposed to that way. And there were certain times where, you know, I've had the opportunity and the blessing by Allah's grace and mercy to speak with the minister as we're going through uh, the paper on press day. And, there are times that I've made a particular um, decision where it's like, whoo, that ended up being by Allah's grace and mercy, the correct, uh, the correct decision. But um, it goes back to, um, again, you know, calling on the God, um, being cognizant of what, you know, all of these, these books, whether we're talking about, you know, what's coming up out of the, what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad has given us what the Honorable Minister Louis right. Farrakhan is continuing to feed us and to give us and really feed feeding on their words because it's their words that we want to, of course, give to the people 
in what we present to them in the final call. So though we are talking about current events, we know that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan have given us these headlines in advance to what we see manifesting uh, not only in the United States, but abroad. So for me, you know, uh, Sister Sadia and Brother Aileen, you know, um, definitely, uh, I know I pronounced it wrong, so you have to help me, my Arabic teacher. So it's not, it's not al muhyamin it's al muhyamin Muhaymin, yes, ma'am. Muhaymin, okay. Because Praise whenever me. there's a whenever there's a a followed by a y, it gets the same sound in English. Say, a, may, lay, k, right? So it's it's it follows the same rule as English. Yes, sir. But that particular attribute, um, the protector, the overseer, particularly in dealing with the uh, the words of Allah, um, as we present them in the final call newspaper, is is key. Well, uh, and you know, well, I'm glad that you receive these attributes in the form that they are in, right? The mu, mm -hmm. right? Because we had a chance, Sister Sadia, to talk today about how Allah intervened in our affairs, how he works in our life every day, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I think that's so important, you know, um, to know how he interacts with us, you know? And the minister talks about this especially came out, if you go, everyone go back and watch the Savior's Day message and how he said he received that revelation, how he received it, mm -hmm. right? It's so, so important. So that's why I'm, I'm glad that you took on this task today, you know, to take those attributes because it takes us to another side of the attributes of Allah working in our affairs versus us talking about attributes that we wear like Abdul can you be imagine yes. that your name is somebody that they don't really know they name you Abdul uh, Muzil <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> <I> know, <right? laughs> you know but no but you're but servant of right but it, it, it's just interesting right but but the thing is we, we got a good we had I think a good discussion today around how does Allah work in our everyday life how does that force that that force and power right that power and force Yes, right, because mess. I'm um, like Mama said, a mess to the black man. I believe it's page uh, 41 where he talks about the definition of God, mm -hmm. and he said, in fact, it God means possessor of power and force, mm -hmm. right? So how does that work in our life? So that's the beauty of these attributes that begins with the mu on the front of them. Praise be to Allah. Thank you so much. Praise be to Allah. Thank you. Praise be to Allah. So you on deck next year, right? Soon. Yes, ma'am. Praise it, be to Allah. Allah. Right Inshallah. Bring, bring her back. Bring her back. Oh, bring yeah. Back. She's so, part so, of the so, team. So, Sister Starla, how does it feel being on this side? Oh, my goodness. Heart palpitating as always. <laughs> but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself. Thank you all for considering your sister. I thoroughly oh, enjoyed yeah. it. You all keep up the wonderful, wonderful work that you're doing. It's, it's, to, it's so valuable. And like I said, this is part of my Part of my Ramadan routine for year number three as well. Praise be to Allah. Hey, we're going to definitely have to bring this, uh, this daughter back on. She said year number three, but two or four feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She's projecting. Don't, hey, don't worry about it. He's a scientist. <laughs> don't worry about this daughter because she's going be doing the same thing. Talking about week three. <laughs> That's right. Throwing up, throwing up, throwing up attribute signs. Exactly. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. All right, praise. So, all right, another great episode with our dear, beautiful sister, Sister Starla. May Allah continue to bless you, sister, and all that you do and strengthen um, everything about you, especially your ability to write on behalf of um, our nation and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All oh, praise me. Well, I thank you both so much. All right, episode 20. Tomorrow, we have our dear beloved brother, student minister, Brother Demetri Muhammad. Praise be to Allah. And if you want to hear today's replay, you can go to Facebook at Mas45 and YouTube at 99, the one, the most beautiful names. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at 99TMBN and on YouTube. Go ahead on and subscribe and then forward, you know, take the link and forward it to your friends. And then also, we're not just on social media platform, but we're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts and Podbean, which is the platform 
that the Ummah reflects on as well. And we are a nonprofit organization, 5013C. So help us continue to propagate the faith, help us continue to produce more programs like this and to serve our community. And if you're interested in donating, get your phone, open up the camera and put the camera on the QR code. A link will show up, click on that link and it will take you to the donation page or you can manually put it in on Cash App, dollar sign 991 or on Zelle, 99TMBN at gmail.com. And we've already done some wonderful things with your donation. Um, again, for its celebration at the Gatesville um, in Texas prison unit on the female side, um, they will have their fir first Eid uh, celebration dinner. And it's all yeah, because amazing. of your support and your donation. So we say thank you. And one of our sponsors, Kamiva's Closet. The closet is open. And, you know, if I'm not wearing a regulation garment, y'all, I'm wearing a Kamiva's Closet. Brother Aleem talks about his leisure suits. He got about seven of them. And so, seven. <laughs> seven of them. So Sister Malico right now, she's doing a special. Let me tell you what the special is. Um, she's giving a discount, 10% discount, and you use the code 99 the one T H E O N E 99 T H E O N E for that 10% discount. And you can scan the QR code. Our dear beloved. For April 14th, correct? Yes, to April 14th. That's it. Yeah. So you got time, y'all, to get y'all garments. And then our sister, our beautiful sister, she was a guest. And I suggest you go back and listen to her um, her podcast as well, Sister Fatima Muhammad. And she has the Ramadan Journal and Planner, 30-day companion, including daily Quranic Jews, weekly reflection prayer tracker, and more. It is not too late. You can start with where you are, and you can get one for next year as well. And you can visit at mysistershouse.org to purchase yours. And... Our dear beloved brother, who will be on tomorrow, has a Ramadan 2024 Quranic Reading Journal and Historical Digest. Again, it is not too late to get yours. And the other thing is, is so much history in these Ramadan journals. If you, he's been producing them for the past four to five years, and it's a lot of history of our nation. So you want to get yours. Even if you don't journal, you still want the information that's in it. And you can shop.researchminister.com to purchase. All right. Praise be to Allah. To Allah. You ready, Sister Sister um, Starla? Yes, so, ma'am. All right. We would like to close with the words of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who's reported to have said, cultivate within yourselves the attribute of Allah. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stated, if you run down all of the attributes, characteristics of God, these are also the attributes of human beings who are crafted by the Creator. Praise be to Allah. Be to Allah. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, family, that's it for today. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Bismillah. He is the benevolent, the giving and merciful. He so indescribable. His love is irreversible. Word undeniable, lyrically untriable, ultimately viable, eternally suppliable. Maybe inconceivable, but beautifully believable. The true reality, there's no similarity. Gave us more than charity, peace and prosperity. Why did we never care to see it? We could keep its clarity. The Almighty, the Father, metaphorically, but in the history, they tried to make his word a mystery. Gave a mortality and the promorphic fallacy. Say he's got a seed, they can never bring the proof to me And honestly, the greatest, the best beyond time and space Beyond matter and flesh, yes, he's uncomparable Yet his parables, infinitely list of pictures Couldn't give a good description, the pictures missing But he created all the living in every dimension And he inspired what I'm giving, the giver of wisdom Devoid of any needs, anything that he want All he has to say is be, cause he's the untouchable Infinitely trustable, his plan unstoppable, power unstoppable Untoppable, the reliable, undeniable, greater than the physical, master of the mystical, the master of the worlds, the fashioner of seas.